Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. I was helped by my Bible, which had a small footnote suggesting that there was another possible translation of that passage. It suggested work to exhaustion. So the passage would read then, Come to me, all you who work to exhaustion, and I will give you rest. Work to exhaustion might conjure up in your mind somebody doing manual labor all day long, but I was thinking of those people who are exhausted by life. Perhaps you are one of them, or you know someone who is just exhausted by the pandemic. You are just weighed down by day after day listening to all these statistics and different experts that seem to not agree with each other. You're weighed down by the fact that you cannot do many of the things that you would enjoy doing. You also might think in terms of Oh, just how we say a typical or maybe model American family. You know, husband, wife, couple kids, something like that. People that are striving to live, to find happiness in the American system, if you will. So you think of a day for them. They, they get up in the morning, they have to get the kids out to school, both parents are off to work because having that extra income, that, that matters because that helps them get, gain the happiness that they're interested in. And of course, the jobs matter because part of, part of that dream, part of that happiness is to be fulfilled in your work. And so they work hard and they'll put in extra time, perhaps, at different seasons to help out their careers. And then after work, after school, there's all those things that need to be done for the kids, getting them from one practice to another, a rehearsal, to a meeting. And after all of that, it's not surprising that something might happen, like uh, happen to a uh, gentleman who shared this with me. He said at the end of the day, he and his wife had gone out to the back porch to just spend a little bit of time. And he said, I wasn't out there two minutes. And I started looking around the yard and realized all that needed to be done. And so he started saying to his wife things like, well, you know, it's, it's that time we need to get the mulch delivered so that we can remulch all the beds. And, you know, I've been thinking about adding on something, you know, a section to the deck here. We'd have more room, maybe get a new grill for summer. And evidently, he went on at some length, naming off thing after thing that needed to be done. And she finally turned to him and said, can we not just enjoy it the way it is? You see... He was burdened by almost, if you will, the expectations of what he was supposed to accomplish. And some of that included keeping up this lovely house and the nice yard. And Jesus says to us, if that's you, if you are working to exhaustion, I can give you rest. And that may sound just tremendous, like someone's throwing you a life raft. But you've got to be careful because you may hear it as, oh, good, Jesus is going to take away some of this stuff. He's going to take away things off my to-do list. And then I'll get to enjoy the life that I've somehow pictured in my head. 
But then the next thing that Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. That's not a life preserver, thrown to a drowning man. That's 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 pushing the guy underwater because you know you, you can hear that and say, wait, I, I already got all this stuff I need to do. You want me to put on Jesus' yoke? You want me to do more? And you'd be like the guy who met with the pastor in his office. They talked for an hour. The pastor was trying to convince the man that he needed to go to Mass, take his family. And the man would have none of it. Because he said to the pastor, Sunday morning is the only time I have to spend with my family. And I'm not giving that up. See, then you come to what I think is the most important part of this passage. Jesus does say, take my yoke upon me, upon you, but then he says, and learn from me. Learn, I think, is the key word. Because Jesus is not, I think, going to be of much help if you insist on your own definition of happiness and fulfillment. If you look for happiness and fulfillment in, shall we just say, the American dream. But if you learn from Jesus, that is, if you read the stories of Jesus, read what he says and how he talks and how he acts, you will start to realize that Jesus has got a whole different set of priorities. He's got a whole different way of going about finding fulfillment. And those priorities do not align with society's priorities. And so in some respects, it is true. Jesus does want to take your to-do list and take a whole lot of things off of it for you. But the things he's going to take off are things that maybe right now you think are very important. So, for example, he might take the yard off the list. Because you have this desire to have this lovely looking yard so that, you know, your house looks nice to the neighbors and, 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 and that's what, you know, you're supposed to have. But Jesus might remind you that, hey, you have kids, and they have friends, and a yard's a great place to play, and you should play with them. So rather than trying to keep this manicured lawn and then have to say to the kids, don't get on the yard, and maybe yell at them when they do, convincing the kids that you think grass is more important than you think they are. But instead of that, you you got a yard. You just spend the time, instead of taking care of the yard in this pristine fashion, you spend some of that time, maybe a lot of that time, playing with your kids. Another great example of this is Jesus will change your view of worry. Great example for us is hurricane season. You only have to ask yourself, how worried were you when the last storm was coming our way? And, and mind you, I'm not suggesting you should not be concerned about that and you should not make proper preparations. You should decide whether you're going to stay or evacuate. You should decide what needs to be done around your house to protect your house and your safety if you're going to stay there. 
You should absolutely do those things. But what you should not do is days, maybe a week before the storm is going to get here, you should not be sitting and worrying about it. Uh, is the storm going to come this way? What about that tree out in the front yard? What, what, what if it comes down on the house? Uh, what am I going to do? And what, what am I going to do about all these antiques I have that, I, that are so important to me that I need to keep, take care of? All you have to do is ask yourself the last time you worried about a hurricane, did it make any difference? Your worrying did not change the path of the storm. Your worrying did not keep trees from coming down. And Jesus, by helping us, helping you and I align our priorities, so it's a little less about stuff, then we'll do what we need to do in preparation for the storm, and then the storm will do what it does. And we can focus, again, maybe more on people, our family, our loved ones, than about our stuff. Maybe we can help the neighbor put plywood up on their window. I think the great part about this is Jesus goes on and says, my burden is easy and light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Because what Jesus is saying to us, if you'll swap yokes, if you will, instead of being yoked to society, and society's expectations of what it's going to take for you to be happy. If you would take on Jesus' yoke, you'll find that Jesus' yoke is easier and lighter. I don't know, honestly, if I could have told you that maybe six years ago. Maybe it was just being in seminary, I don't know. Maybe it was just God finally was able to get through to me. Maybe I just finally got to that part of my spiritual life where I figured this out. But it's true. It is true. The more I accept Jesus' yoke, the more I accept the way Jesus wants to, to direct me, the more comfortable I am, the more fulfilled I am, the more all sorts of things that people tell me should be really important to me, they're not. And because they're not, I don't spend a lot of time with them, I don't worry about things. And so I, I commend this to your thinking. What yoke is on you? And if it's too heavy for you, if you feel exhausted by life, Jesus is offering you something much, much better.